Takeru is a lonely, worthless loser who couldn't bag any girl all his life. But everything changes when he starts to attend an all-girls school with warrior girls who want his meat. Just after getting admitted to the school, he is visited by Haruko, his childhood friend, who he has not seen for three years. Upon hearing her voice from outside, he quickly tries to wear his trousers, but mistakenly pushes a stack of boxes, which almost falls on her. However, he quickly prevents it but ends up grabbing one of her cannons. He soon realizes he has unknowingly fulfilled every average loser's dream. But Haruko smacks his disgusting face before welcoming him into the school. However, the idiot activates X-ray vision and stares at her melons, wondering how they have grown so big in the last three years. The next day on their way to school, Haruko asks Takeru why he chose the academy, and he replies that it's because he didn't need to write an entrance exam or he would have failed because he had done this. He adds that he also chose the academy because the all-girls school recently became co-ed so his stupid ass would get a chance at plot development, <laughs> yeah, boy. unlike his all-boys middle school. Later on getting to school, Haruko tells him that it is not as he thinks as there are other things he doesn't know about the school, making him wonder what the heck is different here. She tells him they have their school festival in sus clothes, and becomes excited that he is about to have the best time in his miserable lonely life. Later, Haruko separates from him, and as he walks within the school premises, he suddenly comes across two idiots engaged in an intense fight over a guy that doesn't give a shit about them. What? He becomes shocked, and while he wonders what the heck is happening here, he sees a strange girl named Pimigami hanging down from a tree's branch. However, as the two girls fight on, one of them kicks a sword that comes to cut off the branch the other girl is hanging on, and she falls off, accidentally kissing Taker in the process. She becomes embarrassed and quickly takes off her lips, but this only gives him a 4K view of her panties making her even more ashamed. She immediately grabs him and threatens to unolive him, but he tells her he didn't see her white panties or anything like that. However, as she holds him by his clothes, she suddenly sees a symbol on his chest and becomes shocked. She stands up immediately, wondering who he is, but Taker who stands up and leaves. However, as he runs off, she declares that she has found her sworn enemy, the foe she has been looking for. Later, during the assembly, the academy's principal begins to give a long, boring speech. While at it, she tells them that they will all receive the element to fight for the Eight Macon, and that if they can become the owner of the Eight Macon, they will surely have a bright future. Takeru does not understand what the heck she is talking about, so the principal calls out two girls who would demonstrate what she means. However, the two girls seem to be enemies and are not ready to face each other, and while they wonder if they should call someone else, Imagami volunteers to do it. She immediately points at Takeru and declares she would like to fight with him, shocking everyone. Haruko quickly steps forward to object to it, saying Takeru is just a new student, but they don't listen to her and call his stupid ass forward to fight anyway. He becomes nervous as he gets to the stage, but Himigami tells him not to worry as she won't go all out on him. However, Haruko is worried for him, fearing she will harm him. Meanwhile, as they prepare to fight, Himigami plans to get rid of him, but so she won't be caught. She summons her Shikigami and tells him to plant a timed lightning ball into Takeru's heart, since he is a weakling Help me! and has no resistance against elements, and this would induce a shock to his heart that would isekai him several days later. The battle soon begins, and Takeru manages to spar with her for some moments, but Himigami suddenly activates her element and charges at him with an enormous lightning that could send him to Nirvana in a snap, but a random girl quickly jumps in and blocks it with her Macon surprising him Gammy that someone could block her element. They realize that her Macon is not a replica, but one of the eight original ones, causing them to wonder who she is. The girl falls into Takeru's arms from exhaustion, but soon hugs him in delight, shocking him and leaving him wondering who she is. She introduces herself as Inaho, his fancy, and says she has come here to protect Takeru, shocking him. She suddenly pecks him, making the ugly idiot think he has finally gotten a girl to like his disgusting face. Haruko feels jealous and later goes to visit him, but she is shocked when she sees Inaho in his dorm, who tells her that the principal allowed her to stay with him since she is his fiancé and the room is big enough to contain them. Himgami soon enters too and says she will be moving to the room too, shocking Heikaru. However, Heikaru is not gonna allow some bitches to take her childhood crush away from her, so she immediately goes to pack her bags too. Meanwhile, 
Takeru can't believe three hot chicks are fighting over him. <laughs> yeah, boy. The next morning, Haruka wakes up and climbs the bunk to check on Takeru, but she finds Inaho cuddling him and slaps his useless face. Later, while the girls cook, he steps out to check on them, and Haruko gives him a pack of ice to soothe his messed up face after warning him to be cautious next time. After that, he heads to the bathroom, but unknowingly, he walks in on Himagami and sees her two pointed balloons. Himagami becomes angry and strikes him with lightning. Later, while they sit at the table to eat, Taker wonders why the life of the MC can be so miserable. Are you serious? But he manages to eat the meal before him. They suddenly realize they are late for school and set out immediately. They run as fast as they can, but Takeru is such a loser and weakling that he struggles to catch up with the girls. I'm dying. The girls manage to enter the school before the gate is locked. However, Takeru is still behind, so Himigami reluctantly summons Kazuchi her Shikigami, who immediately goes to aid the idiot, shocking him. He watches her in awe as she leaves, and Haruko explains that Himigami used her invisible skill and that she is the only one who can do that without a making. Later, on reaching the class, one homeroom teacher with a face built like golems announces that they will be doing a physical checkup. Upon hearing this, Takeru and his stupid partner immediately reason that this will be a chance to peep at the girls, so they lie to the teacher that they need to use the toilet and race to a nice spot on the tree for their mischievous act. As the naughty morons compare the different sizes of the girls' melons and almost climax on their feet, Naughty, naughty! Himigami suddenly talks, revealing that she has been there for a while. She calls them sissies who only watch corn but have no balls to talk to real girls, and then she crashes them to the ground from the tree. The idiots quickly beg for their lives before scurrying away like rabbits. Meanwhile, Kazuchi is surprised that she didn't isekai them in anger, and she replies that she didn't feel any anger toward him like she did the previous, but she is still confused about the mark on his chest. Later in the infirmary, while they check the aptitude and compatibility of the students to a Macon, the machine reads that it can't find anyone suitable for Takeru, and they all wonder why. Haruko goes to meet the principal to find out the cause, but she doesn't understand why either. Some days later, a suitable Macon is still yet to be found for Takeru, and while he sulks over this, the wind blows a sheet of paper to cover his disgusting face, and upon checking it, he realizes it's an ad on joining a club in the academy. He wonders what club he should join and decides to ask Inaho, the one she belongs to. But she tells him that she will join anyone he joins, surprising him. He then asks why she said she is his fiancé and has come to protect him, but she is surprised that he doesn't remember and tells him it's a secret. A few moments later, Haruko appears with a lunchbox for him, and he tells her he would like her to show him around the school, so he can decide which club to join, however. Haruko only remembers the discussion they had in the principal's office about why the machine couldn't identify a suitable Macon for him. It happened that they didn't find a suitable Macon for three students, of which Inaho is also one, and this other bitch who no one knows anything about. Why are you bullying Meanwhile, me? Meanwhile, Takeru's brain came with a slow processor chip and still didn't understand the gravity of the situation, so he foolishly asked if not having a Macon was a problem. <laughs> they snapped at him, wondering why a student's IQ could be that low. They reveal that not having an element will make him open to attacks from other students without being able to defend himself. Back to the present, a dude named Jen asks the principal if Takeru is the sensei's son after observing him for a while, and she confirms it. They also wonder about Inaho, who has a real Macon, unlike the replicas they have always known, and Jen tells her it's about time she stops speaking about replicas. Later after school, they walk around the school to find the club Takeru could join. As he checks the list in his hand, the filthy idiot suddenly comes across a club called Gravu Photography and immediately shows interest because it will allow him access to free uncensored content. However, Haruko knows what he is up to and objects to it, telling him to join the Kinkabu instead, but the dude doesn't know what the heck that is. However, she tells him she is the club's president, and he tells her to give him time to think about it. The next day, on her way to school, Takeru asks Haruko more info about the Kinkabu and she explains that they assist the student council in maintaining order among the students. After her explanation, an idiot named Kengo appears, excited to know she is the student council's vice president, and he tries to touch her. However, Taker thinks he is aiming for her melons and quickly lunges forward to stop him, but ends up grabbing them for himself instead. It should have been me! Meanwhile, he suddenly receives a punch to his face courtesy of a girl, who introduces Minaya for being such a dickhead but Haruko quickly defends Takeru that it must have been an accident. 
Minea apologizes but tells him that she hates idiots who wear glasses. Hey, yo, what the they suddenly receive a report of an ongoing fight and immediately head there to see what's happening. It's a fight between Izuki and a rough guy named Kurigasa, who wants to date her by force, and he tells her that if he wins, she must become his girl. Takeru and Kengo talk between themselves that it must be because he is pure and has never bagged a girl, but Himigami cuts in saying he is at least better than them who only know how to peep at girls with no balls to talk to them. We don't care. The fight soon begins and Kurigasa launches an attack. But Izuki evades him by launching into the air and landing with a kick to his head. But her kick doesn't affect him, because the dude's got a face built like a tank. He tells her this is the power of his making, called Makin Steel Fulminal. Then he lands a blow that tears her uniform immediately, exposing her plot armor. She becomes pissed and tells the referee that this mortal oh. must cover the cost of her uniform and underwear if she wins. Meanwhile, everyone is interested in how the fight will turn out. But Takeru looks terrible, and his classmate asks him why. So he replies that he is not cool that a guy is fighting with a girl. However, they tell him that girls are stronger than he imagines. But dude doesn't buy that crap, because that's not what he learned from Andrew Tate. Nobody believes in you! So he attempts to interrupt the fight. The girls immediately stop him but a ball of light suddenly starts to shine from his mouth, and he suddenly jumps amid the battle to block Kurigasa's ultimate punch, which was almost hitting Izuki. Meanwhile, Kurigasa knocks him off in the process, but this opens him up to a knee attack from Izuki, knocking him out. Izuki feels satisfied that she has screwed Kurigasa, but she soon becomes ashamed when she sees her snowy panties floating in the sky. After dismissing all the busybodies who came to watch the fight, she specially thanks Takeru for humiliating her before her fans. You serious? She asks him why he did something so stupid, uh -huh. and Haruko comes to rebuke him for interrupting a fight without having a Makin. However, Inaho commends his power for blocking Kurugasa's punch and making Haruko consider how cute he is and how he has always been a masculine man since she knew him. Takeru then says that even if girls are gonna fight, the outcome should be concluded fairly. Haruko tells him that this is exactly Ken Kaibu's duty, which makes him decide to join the club immediately. Meanwhile, Himigami watches from afar and is surprised by the strength Takeru displayed earlier, which is similar to what she once felt. Following this, Takeru, Kengo, and Inaho head to the club room to declare their interest, and they are taken to a hot spring for an intense plot battle, which makes the two dudes in their midst almost climax in their pants upon seeing the different catalogs of plot sizes. Some minutes later, a moon bear suddenly appears and starts to chase the two weak idiots, but the girls manage to save their stupid asses with the combined attacks of their making. In the events following this, the club members teach and train their newbies so their useless faces can become useful to the club. After the day's training, Takeru is exhausted and experiences body pains, so Inaho offers a neuro massage to help him release all his stored-up stress. Insert says dog man man. As she begins the massage, Haruko becomes jealous where she is sitting, and when she can't take it anymore, she comes to join too. Meanwhile, Himigami peeps on them from outside, but she is surprised that she can't feel Takeru's power from him right now and reasons that she has to verify the origin of his power to find out if he is her enemy or not. She barges in and steps on his back while they massage him, making him think, who the heck this is? But he wouldn't dare say such because she would whoop his ass out. She suddenly asks him out the next day since it's the weekend, and the following day, while he waits for her at the agreed location, he wonders why she invited him out since she seems to hate him for a reason he has no idea of. She soon arrives and tells him he will accompany her on her shopping trip, and since he is a loser, he will have to carry her load. Meanwhile, Horuko and her two other useless partners decide to spy on them to see if the two would be sus during the whole shopping time. After shopping for a while and Takeru acting like a slave, Imagami enters a bikini store to get some freaky clothes. She soon enters the changing room to test some bikinis, but Takeru continues to hold on to her loads like his life depends on it. In the changing room, she wonders why he smells so much like her brother. However, his hands soon start to go numb, and he suddenly loses his balance, causing him to fall and fortunately, giving him exclusive access to Himigami's uncensored content. Yes. She gets angry, as her norm is, and crushes his disgusting face with her foot. Mm. Later at the restaurant, Azuki appears as the maid to take their orders, and upon seeing the dweeb that made her plot a public show, she gets angry and releases the aura that immediately makes Takeru realize he is in trouble. She soon appears with a pie, but upon seeing it, Takeru tells her he doesn't like green peas, so she tells him that since he seems picky, he might as well like to pick how he wants to die. 
Taker becomes so scared that he is gonna piss his pants, and he tells her his doctor actually said green peas are good for his health. <laughs> Later, after leaving the restaurant, Takeru and Himigami get talking, and he almost rizzes her up, but she quickly calls herself back to ask why she called him out in the first place. She thinks of how she can examine the mark on her chest, but since her dumb skull can't come up with a better idea, she pounces on him and grabs his shirt, demanding to see his chest. However, bro wonders what the heck this bitch is up to. Are you okay? But as he tries to stop her, some free idiots simping over him Higami, suddenly fly into the scene to make a complete mess of themselves and reveal how stupid they are. She gets pissed as she is surprised by how many foolish males got accepted into the academy this year. What do you and mean then, by that? She summons her Shikigami to dump their worthless asses into the nearby river. <laughs> Meanwhile, a different breed of idiot Here we go again. appears and demands to fight with her. He immediately activates his Macon Blade Snake and charges at her, but she dodges his attack easily. He unleashes another attack, which sends her flying into the river. However, Takeru quickly tries to save her, but ends up falling into the river with her and kissing her in the process. While the attacker thinks he has won, Takeru pulls a move right out of a Bollywood movie and lands on the ground. He immediately charges at the moor and lands a kick, sending him flying. The guy counterattacks with his blades, but the crest on Takeru's chest suddenly appears, accompanied by lightning. Upon seeing it, Himigami realizes he has the same ability as her brother. She reasons that his power is the convergence of the soul blood pointer. Takeru eventually knocks him off him, crashing him into a tree. However, he immediately comes out of his avatar state and wonders what, what the heck just life? happened. Where am I? He asks Himigami if he didn't do something stupid again, and she tells him he saved her, so she rewards him with her spit, making everyone mad. Following this, Haruko becomes jealous that the other girls seem to be having their way with Takeru, unlike her, who's got a long messed up face. She begins to act mean to him because of this and serves him a box of his worst meal. He is shocked and goes to challenge her, but she calls him an ungrateful idiot and tells him to start making his own meal. As she attempts to leave, he quickly tries to stop her, but the ill luck bastard accidentally pulls her skirt off, <laughs> I'm in danger, embarrassing her before her juniors. However, Manea was there just in time to reward him with a factory reset punch. He tries to explain that he didn't do anything and asks Haruko to bear witness, but she tells him never to fondly call her by name again, shocking into the bones. Later, while Taker wonders how the heck he is gonna eat now since his broke ass has got no money, Inevo comes to tell him some bullshit it's best you don't know about. The Kenkatmu Club holds a meeting afterward, and the student council president tells them about the recent violent incidents that have been occurring in the school. All the victimized students have reportedly lost their memories of the incident. Since they have no information about the culprit and the witnesses, they assign Manaya and Takeru to investigate the case and gather more information. Just before they begin the mission, Manea clearly tells Takeru that she hates him and his disgusting face what I do? and is only working with him because she has no choice, making him wonder if his face is really that horrible. <laughs> Later, while she analyzes the little results they have gathered, there is an ongoing protest in Takeru's stomach that becomes very annoying to Manaya, so she gives him something to snack on. As he eats, she remembers when Haruko was once admirable to her, which attracted her since then. The shameless idiot soon finishes eating and asks if she, by any chance, brought juice too, but she kicks him in the face before telling him to go drink his piss. While he later drinks water, he reasons that he is being treated like a piece of shit and becomes determined to show what he is capable of. He then tries reaching out to the Kenkaibu Club, but a strange girl suddenly walks up and tells him she knows the culprit they are investigating, gaining his attention. However, as she finds out his name, she immediately activates her making which creates a web network on the ground that glues his feet to the ground and makes him unable to move. Manea appears and unleashes her attacks, but the crazy girl manages to dodge them. However, she also glues Manea to the ground when she finds out what her name is. She tells them she expected to fight the higher-ups in the Kankagu, not two weaklings like them. Takeru immediately tries to call the team, but Manea tells him not to even think of doing something that's stupid and says it's their mission so they have to handle it alone. Meanwhile, at the club room, the Kenkebu suspect that something may be wrong since Manaya and Takeru haven't reached out to them at all, and upon hearing this, Haruko storms out immediately. The crazy girl tells Manaya and Takeru to call for help immediately, or she will beat them to the point of unrecognition. Bruh. But Manaya insists that she will fight her to prove she isn't weak. 
However, the crazy girl hits her with her makin, causing a large explosive light. Takeru sees this and immediately beckons on Kimmy to propel her to the location with her makin. She makes Surprise, a rip Black Widow's entrance, and on seeing her, the crazy bitch attempts to use her makin to glue her to the ground too, but Haruko resists it. She then asks her what her goal for doing all these is, but she seems to have a fuzzy memory. However, she says that the higher-ups of the Macon Key won't easily accept a battle request, so she decided to craft a plan to lure them out. Haruko tells her she will forgive her for hurting her juniors, so she unleashes her Macon immediately, overwhelming the crazy girl. The girl realizes that Haruko possesses the most destructive of the eight Macon and asks her to pull out her sword to fight with her so they can decide the winner. However, Haruko humiliates her by saying her Macon only opens its seal according to the intensity of her emotions and the opponent's strength. Hence, she won't be able to pull it out, because her current opponent is as weak as a wet noodle. The girl becomes angry and charges at her immediately, but Haruko destroys her Macon in one swing while also knocking her out in the process. Following this, Takeru, feeling impressed by her Macon's power, tells her he wants her to train him and she becomes excited as she remembers when they used to train together when they were little. Meanwhile, an unknown dude reports the incident to a girl the anime is yet to introduce, and she is surprised that Horuko didn't even need to pull out her sword to defeat her enemy, so they decide to lie low for a while. A few days later, while it rains, Inaho feels moody as she thinks about her childhood moments with Takeru on a particular rainy day. But Takeru seems not to have the last memory feature installed. He comes to inform her that their next class is at the gym, and she immediately stands up to leave, but Takeru wonders what is wrong with her as she leaves. Later at the gym, they are all given a crystal ball, containing dark fog each, and are required to control the fog to the center of the ball, but it proves difficult for Takeru and his friends. Kengo says that Horuko would have pulled this off easily, and Takeru replies that she is built differently, seeing how she controlled such a powerful Makin, unlike their worthless faces. Kengo then remembers the incident from the previous day and asks about it. Taker replies that the crazy girl couldn't remember anything after she was disarmed, which made them conclude that her memory must have been altered by a third person, just like her victims. The principal suddenly smacks Kengo's head and rebukes them for talking instead of practicing. She tells them they will suffer later if they take this class carelessly, as knowing how to use an element is more valuable than the making itself, surprising Taker. She decides to demonstrate it to them and calls Kurigasa forward. However, Kurigasa thinks he is Superman and mocks that she would get hurt since his Macon makes his body as hard as steel, but the principal tells him to worry for his mother. She makes some crappy yoga moves, controlling her element around her body, and then charges at Kurigasa, who immediately becomes hard. Insert Sus Dog Man Man. However, she moves at a speed you can only find in anime, <coughs> knocking him hard and throwing him off. Back in class, Inaho continues to think about her time with Takeru when they were little, and she seems to be in heat and wants him so badly. Bruh, chill. Takeru invites her to join her in shopping for food, and she gladly accepts. Later on their way back from the shopping, they sit down together to talk, and she tells him it was raining like this on that day too. However, Takeru wonders what day she is talking about, so she gives him a hint to help him remember, but bro's brain is too dead and can't remember shit. He tells her to remind him but she feels sad and replies that it would be boring if she were the only one to remember it, so he casually tells her he will let her know when he remembers. He then suggests that they return to the dorm and continue their talk there, but she replies that he can go ahead of her as she would like to spend some time alone. The stupid dude, who doesn't understand one ease, heads home just as she requested. You f***ing idiot! And Inaho continues to feel sad about everything. Meanwhile, on Kengo's way to the dorm, he sees her walking alone on the road, looking miserable, and he wonders what she is doing. Takeru returns to the dorm, and Haruko, surprised he is alone, asks him where the girl is. The idiot tells her she asked to be left alone. Himigami overhears this and tells him this is why he is still single. Emotional damage! Takeru realizes that he has screwed up, so he runs out immediately to go get Enaho. But on his way out, he meets Kengo, who asks him if Enaho is back becomes angry and smacks his disgusting face, telling him that he saw the poor girl walking alone, drenched in rain, because of him. Kengo takes it a bit more personally and attempts to hit him again, Bruh, chill. but Takeru stops him and swings him off, saying, what the heck? As he heads to meet Inaho, he remembers all she said earlier and feels terrible for being a jerk. 
Meanwhile, Inno finds a cat in the mountains and starts to pet it. But they suddenly hear Takeru's voice. The cat jumps off her hands and runs to see who the heck it is. Takeru sees it and wonders, it is also looking for someone. However, a rock slide suddenly occurs and Raccoon almost hits the cat. But Takeru spontaneously activates what the principal demonstrated in class and manages to save it. Moreover, more rocks come crashing toward them, but Inaho quickly intercepts them by activating her Makin. Afterward, she thanks him for saving the cat, and she suddenly remembers the promise he once made to her to get stronger and protect her. Later, he carries her on her back as they head home, and he apologizes for not being able to remember his promise to her. He tells her to give him some more time and then says he will get stronger one day so he can protect her. Upon hearing this, she realizes that deep inside, he hasn't forgotten what he said to her back then and that his feelings haven't changed. Several weeks later, Jen runs to meet Haruko and Kengo to ask for Takeru's whereabouts, but he discovers he is the one they are dragging on the ground after he has been beaten to a pulp. He wonders what happened, and they explain that the idiot refused to mind his business when he saw two girls fighting. He decided to separate but ended up tapping their balloons in the process, so they beat his stupidity out of him. Jen then brings out a box and tells him they've finally gotten a Macon for him. But before he can say anything further, he suddenly sees a chopper above the academy and some people preparing to descend from it. He immediately runs off, and some girls appear in the helicopter. Meanwhile, the principal Minori also sees them from her office and wonders who they are. An ugly dude dressed like a captain opens her door and makes a gesture that'd make you question his gender. Gay! Minori, seeing it's Akaya, shuts the door on his disgusting face and demands to know what he came for. He soon introduces the girls from earlier and says they are transfer students, surprising Minori. He further says that they are maidens called Venus, but Minori doesn't give two shits about some crazy ass bitches. We don't care. He brought along with him and demands to know why he came again. Akaya then explains that Kamigiri believes that someone in the school wants to revive the Yamato Norochi, but Minori bursts out in laughter and tells him that shit is a superstition. However, Akaya further says that they don't think so, as the Kamigiri is an organization using the powers of the Makin and Element to support the country from the shadows. But during ancient times, when the gods reigned the world, they were a combat group formed by people who did not want to be ruled by the gods. So when they make speculation like that, her ugly ass better believe they are not joking around. Jen and two other teachers appear in anger and ask Akaya why he has come, but he ignores him and leaves with the student council president to see the Kenkaibu. After he leaves, Jen declares that Akaya was a member of the first generation of the Macon Key with them. Later, the Venus introduce themselves at the Kenkaibu's club room, but they refuse to acknowledge the Kenkaibu, saying they will only be comrades after seeing their strength. One of the Venus Yan insults them in the process, making Azuki so mad that she demands that they settle this over a battle, and Yan agrees immediately. However, since fighting is not allowed within the academy, they compete in sports instead. The volleyball game begins with Azuki serving the ball, but Demetra hits it in return with her element, which knocks Haruko to the ground in the process. She gets angry and then says she initially took this as a joke, but since it has come to this, she will go all in on defeating them as the Kenkaibu president. The match continues with both sides scoring each other until they draw at 14 points, and with two points left to decide the winner, they become more aggressive. The Venus challenges that if they lose, they will join the Macon Kai. But if they win, the Macon Key will have to stop their activities for the rest of the semester. Proceeding with the match, Yan unleashes a brutal service that damages a part of the court. And seeing this, Kimi launches the ball and, coupled with the joint efforts of Haruko and Izuki, they unleash a powerful shot that crashes Yan to the wall behind her, pissing her off. Dimitri becomes angry and summons her Macon's full power. Meanwhile, on seeing this, Haruko also summons Heaven's Gate and takes a defensive position. Dimitra immediately sends an attack, and Haruko counters with her Macon, causing a massive explosion. However, Takeru sees this and quickly jumps in to try to stop them as his habit is, and thanks to him, he manages to save Syria. One of the Venus Maidens, who immediately calls him cute, even though he is as ugly as Fog. Dimitra thanks him for saving their friend and apologizes for taking things a bit too far. Following this, the Venus and the Kenkibu acknowledged each other's strength, and even though no one won, the Venus decided to join the Macon Kai. The next day, the teacher introduces Syria to the class, and as soon as she reveals her full name, the whole class becomes shocked when they realize that she is a popular idol. 
Siri soon sees Takeru and jumps at him, excited that they are in the same class, but Inaho quickly points out that she is his fiancé. However, Siri asks some difficult questions about her supposed relationship with Takeru, which makes her realize that she is just a deluded idiot. Siri soon takes her leave, and all the unattractive boys in class pounce on Takeru, for bagging all the pretty girls to himself How? while leaving them to compete with the ugly ones. Later, Siri meets with her colleagues to tell them about her crush on Takeru, and they ask her what she would like to do with him. She replies that she would like to have a date, but she is worried about the other girls flocking around him. However, they tell her not to worry about it as they would help her eliminate all the obstacles. Following that, they discuss how they will eliminate the girls so she can have time alone with them, with Inaho being the highlight of the discussion, whom they plan to deceive with her favorite snacks. The next day, Takeru arrives in class and sees Kengo looking depressed, so he asks him what is wrong. Kengo whines that he hasn't even gotten a girl to look at him since he came into the school, which makes him wonder what he isn't doing right since his fellow ugly classmate looks like a Halloween Bruh. costume but still has girls coming after him. As he talks, Takeru sees a love letter on his desk and quickly hides to prevent Kengo from thinking of unliving himself for how ugly and miserable he is. During the lunch break, Takeru heads to the toilet to read the letter, and he is excited that someone is confessing her love to him for the first time in his lonely life. Meanwhile, he doesn't know that Kengo has secretly followed him and is listening on him. Kengo goes to meet the other girls immediately to tell them that Takeru received a love letter from an unknown girl, but they find it hard to believe because no one that ugly should be receiving such a letter. What do you mean by that? Later after school, Ino can't find Takeru and wonders where he is. However, Kengo, knowing where he went off to, becomes jealous and angry. Inaho starts to look for him, but she finds two bags of cookies and snacks on her way, which distracts her immediately. She soon sees Takeru's doll, which had been planted there to deceive her. And because she is a gullible idiot with an IQ of 10, she easily falls for it and doesn't even realize it's a doll. Meanwhile, Takeru is surprised when he learns that the letter is from Syria. She takes him away, and they spend some time walking around the city, as lovers do. After their unplanned date, she takes him to a spooky building and suddenly disappears, leaving him in the darkroom, which makes him think his life is about to end. In a different location within the school, him, Gemi, and Haruko come across a pile of chairs that is meant to hinder them from finding Takeru. Himigami perceives that someone is watching them, and Yan appears, surprised that she was able to detect her presence despite her hiding perfectly. A seat suddenly appears beneath Takeru, forcing him to sit and locking him down. Then Surya appears and asks if he is ready because she is about to go down. Meanwhile, Inaho appears with Takeru on her back, wondering why he isn't responding. However, Haruko calls her a disgrace to women for not realizing she is carrying a doll. Yan makes a mischievous smile as she declares they are already too late, but she is shocked when she suddenly sees their plan outlined with Himigami, making her wonder how she took that from her. They soon discover that Takeru is being held hostage in a sus room, and they immediately start heading toward the location before he gets violated. However, when they arrive, they realize Syria just wants to give him an exclusive performance. Later that night, Takeru lies down on his bed, wondering why he didn't fall for Syria, even though she's cute and has huge melons. Some days later, the boys go to meet the student council to protest against the rule that boys and girls can't take swimming lessons together. This rule would prevent the boys from having free access to the girls' exclusive content. <laughs> yeah, boy. So that they aren't going to let that shitty rule stand. They suggest that they compete in a water riding battle, and whoever wins between the boys and the girls decides if they will uphold the rule or not. The student council agreed to this, and the next day, they all prepare to engage in the contest. The rule of the game goes thus. They all have headbands tied around their heads, and whoever loses their bands or drops into the water is out. The contest soon begins, and the boys immediately proceed with their first strategy, which is to have Takeru bring down Inao, since she has a soft spot for him. However, Takeru is shocked when she counters his move without flinching, but he immediately pulls the next trick by speaking in her ears and calling her fat, which instantly puts her guard down, giving them the chance to take her headband. Following this, Himigami attacks using her Shikigami, but Takeru manages to resist it. They start picking on her because she is built like a surfboard, annoying her. Women. She immediately strikes them with lightning, leading to one of them falling off. The battle continues with each party clapping themselves one after the other. On the final move, as the girls propel themselves toward the boys to attack them, 
Demetrius suddenly perceives the arrival of a particular girl and gets distracted, throwing Surya off. Takeru grabs her, putting her huge, soft pillows on his chest, and then he pulls off her headband, making them the winner of the contest. Meanwhile, Surya meets Demetra to ask why she suddenly stopped earlier, and she reveals that the last member has arrived, so they can proceed with carrying out the mission they've been assigned, which is to investigate the Academy's students' abilities and abduct their target. The next day at school, while Takeru and Kengo chill on the school field, Takeru sees a pretty silver-haired girl sitting by the window. Not being able to comprehend how a girl can be that beautiful, since he is used to seeing ugly ones, What the hell is even that? He immediately tells his friend to look at her, leaving the idiot shocked too. Damn! Meanwhile, the student council president meets girls to tell them about the new student in school and that Takeru has to be her nanny because she is blind. However, the girl suddenly states from behind them that she ain't need no help from them mofos, shocking them, and she claims that she is fine all by herself. She tells them the color of their panties each, and then explains that she can actually see but has to close her eyes, because of specific reasons idiots like them can't know about. At the same time, while Takeru and Kengo run around the school, looking for the beautiful girl they saw earlier, just like jobless, broke ass men love to do, they come across a dude who obviously has a barber who doesn't like him and an ugly girl named Odoheim having an altercation. They challenge themselves to a fight, and Odoheim tells the dude with a stupid haircut that she would forgive him now if he bends over and licks her stinky feet. The dude tells her he won't simp over an ugly bitch like her, and then calls Takeru to come and be their witness. Takeru immediately tells Kengo to go call the Kenkaibu, and then he takes up the referee role. The dude immediately activates his Makin and forcefully pulls her within his Ronge where he can beat her to a pulp. However, while he thinks Odoheim is just some weak idiot whom he can teach a lesson, she suddenly activates her Makin and turns him into her puppet. Takeru watches for a while and is shocked when he sees the two fighters doing the English or Spanish challenge. You got something to you know. Odoheim's elder brother explains that his little sister can create her own special space and that anyone who enters that territory will be controlled by her. She starts to twist his arms and almost snaps his neck but Takeru feels that he needs to be the hero of the moment, Again. so he quickly runs toward them, attempting to stop them. However, this angers her, and she suddenly starts to control him too, inflicting pain on him. Takeru immediately realizes that he's not just not concerned about girls fighting, but doesn't like to see a weak person being overpowered. He gets angry and struggles to get on his feet again, shocking Odoheim as she wonders how he can resist her control. Takeru starts to advance toward her, but she increases her powers and almost unalives him. However, the silver-haired girl intercepts, causing her to stop. Akaya appears and tells Odoheim that she is already doing too much, but she gets angry and tells him this is not part of his job description. She tells him to focus on what he has been asked to do, or she will report him to her grandpa, Kamigari's chief. After she leaves, Takeru commends the silver-haired girl's powers, and she introduces herself as Minerva. Following that, the Kenkebu meets with Takeru and tell him they discovered he is a dimwit because he hasn't passed his exams. They then tell him that they don't breed failures in the club, so they would fire him if he doesn't pass the makeup exam which comes up the next day. He feels terrible after this because he knows he has a slim chance since he is not that intelligent. However, the girls offer to help him, and Minerva suggests they have a mini training camp. Later, Kengo and Takeru start to practice, but Takeru finds it challenging to channel out his element. So Kengo tells him he is not cut out for this, and speaking of cuts, he should go and learn how to barb haircuts instead. That one there was a violation. This makes Takeru more determined, and he stays there all day till night when he finally learns to control his element, causing a massive increase in the amount of element in the environment. Himigami perceives this, and as she thinks of going to check, she realizes that Minerva has been observing and calls her out. Minerva suddenly compliments her invincible Shikigami, shocking her because no one except herself should be able to see them. She suspects that Minerva must have seen her actual form, and Minerva replies that they received orders to bring her to Kamigori before her existence broke the seal of Amano Hera. Imgami's Shikigamis get defensive and immediately try to attack her, but she defeats them without even trying. Seeing this, Himigami accepts the challenge of fighting her, but Minerva tells her she is not there to fight. She explains that they were also asked to check the strength of the students in the academy, and she has discovered another student with a wave of power similar to hers. Realizing it is Takeru, Imigami asks her if she will be taking him too, 
and Minerva replies that she is not sure yet since she has just arrived at the school. The next day, Takeru eventually passes his exam, and Kenkabu gladly tells him he can continue being with them, which excites him. Some days later, Jen installs Takeru's Makin into his body, and tells him he got a specific one for him, since he doesn't like to fight creatures on skirts. Takeru is surprised that it disappeared into his body. Minori explains that his Makin is the type that only gets activated when his opponents activate their own Makins, leaving him even more confused. So Jen decides to explain in a more lame way since his comprehension capacity takes three business days. He says that his Makin is like that because it can make his opponent's Makins go berserk. Later, while returning to class, he looks at his hand and wonders when and where he would need to use his new Makin. He remembers fighting with Odoheim from the previous day and becomes determined to be better prepared for moments like that next time. Following this, the Kenkebu meets and discusses the upcoming summer training camp. After listing all the activities they will engage in, the student council president shockingly declares that everyone will have to pay from their pockets this year, as opposed to the previous years, where the club sponsors everyone. They feel sad as they all head out of the room because the club is more or less an association of brokies, and they can't afford it. You're wrong. While they wonder how to raise the money, they see the principal pasting a banner on the notice board, and upon checking, they realize there's an opportunity to work at a cafe and earn. They immediately opt in for this and begin working there the next day, doing all they can to ensure they make the money needed for the cafe. Meanwhile, Odalim spies on the school with a tech bird because she is curious to see the real strength of the guy who could resist her the previous day. A while later, Haruko leaves the cafe after being embarrassed by one messed up bitch who pulled her plot armor in public, giving everyone a perfect view of yes. her gigantic melons. She stays by the balcony, wondering how Takeru must have felt seeing her milk jugs. A strange dude in armor suddenly attacks and starts shooting at her with a revolver. Haruko tries to fight back, but his shots are too overwhelming. However, Takeru jumps on the villain from behind and yells at him that he shouldn't be doing this to a girl, but the dude doesn't give a crap about the heck he has to say. He overpowers him with brute strength, and Takeru immediately thinks of using his newly acquired Makin, but he remembers that his opponent has to activate his first, making him realize that he won't be able to use it, since the guy is only using his strength against him. The villain knocks him to the ground, and soon, his hand starts to glow, making it seem like he is about to unleash his power. However, Azuki jumps in from the sky at that and knocks out the enemy. They later open his armor and realize it's the manager of the cafe they are working at. Apparently, he has been controlled by a third party, which Jen declares is the Kamigori, shocking Takeru. Meanwhile, Odoheim is unsatisfied by the turn of events and hopes to see Takeru's strength one day. However, a lady named Kikyu suddenly appears and says she wants to join her in her game. The next day, Buruko is kidnapped and Takeru starts to look for her. On his way, he meets Inaho, who gives him a tie clip and tells him it's a protective charm since he was involved in an incident recently. She apologizes for not fulfilling her duty to protect him and then tells him out of nowhere that he should protect Haruko's feelings, after which she runs off. Takeru heads to class after, but on his way, he comes across a girl acting like she has a demon who tells him that she abducted Haruko and that if he wants to save her, he should come to the tip of Amano Hera alone. Takeru is surprised but becomes shocked when the girl introduces herself as Kikyu from Kamigari, making him realize that she is being controlled. He heads to Amanohara immediately, and on getting there, he meets the real Kikyu, who immediately challenges him to a fight, telling him to go all out against her. He asks her what the purpose of her strength is, and she gives him a selfish response. He tries telling her what the reason he needs strength is, but she interrupts him knowing that he is going to say some superhero bullshit common to MCs. She starts to clap his ass real bad, making his entire existence flash before his eyes. I'm too weak. She crashes him against the Amanohara mountain, which has the same symbol as the crest on his chest. He begins to feel terrible as this moment reminds him of how he could not protect his mother when he was young, and now his weak ass still can't save Haruko. However, he remembers his mom telling him his power should be used to protect someone or stop fights not to subdue people. He suddenly becomes angry, and the symbol on the mountain starts to glow, making him berserk immediately. The veins of the Amanohara mountain suddenly lighten up, and fountains of elements gush out of the ground as his body absorbs them, shocking everyone. Seeing this, Himigami summons one of her Shikigamas and sends her to check what is happening on Amanohara. Meanwhile, Odoheim, holding Haruko hostage, 
tells her that Takeru's body will break once it reaches its limit. Takeru starts to float like a low-budget Superman and heads toward the school to start attacking his friends. Odoheim is excited to see this, and her brother tells her that considering how Emin Ohora reacted, Takeru may be of a bloodline close to theirs. But Haruko objects that Takeru can never be related to their stupid ass, because she has always known him to be kind-hearted. Odoheim gets angry and inflicts pain on her, but the Venus Maidens suddenly appear to save her. They then tell her to go save Takeru while they handle the pieces of trash here. Haruko leaves through a multi-dimensional portal that leads to the Academy and makes a grand entrance, just like Captain Marvel, with her making in her hand, which surprises the other girls that she has finally drawn her sword. Haruko then charges at him, and as Takeru continues to draw element from the environment, he almost bursts open. However, Haruko stabs him on the tie clip that Inaho gave him, immediately returning him to normal. They become excited to have him back, and while they rejoice over this, Kiku appears and says she has come to take him by force as he is qualified to enter Kamigari. However, Takeru disagrees, and the other girls join him, prepared to fight. So Kiku tells him they will return in the future, and that he should learn to use his abilities before that time. Why is Takeru so powerful, and why doesn't he remember his past? Comment part 2 if you want the next part. If you enjoyed this recap, clap the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're yet to for more plot-filled animes. If you like anime recaps like this, watch this video right here.